you doing, Met fans? Welcome to another edition of the Terry Collins Show. I'm John Arezzi. We have a great show for you this week. Opening days come and gone, and even though the 2024 Mets have gotten off to a disappointing start, uh, we're here to put a smile on your face. Uh, with a very special talking with TC that was literally years in the making, and we have a special guest for our Ask the Skipper segment. But first, let's bring on the former Mets skipper and current analyst for Baseball Night in New York and SNY, Terry Collins. Terry, welcome back from New York. Thank you, John. Thanks for it. I'm looking forward to tonight, today's show. I mean, this is this one's going to be exciting to do, and I think the, I think the fans that tune in are going to really enjoy it. Yes, they are. I'll have to tell you one thing. Since we made the announcement and you made the announcement about your guest today on the Talking With TC segment, there's been a buzz out there uh, from everyone. Uh, former MLB umpire, the man who made the phrase ass in the jackpot, one that both you and he have been identified with for quite some time now. Tom Hallion will be on the show today. Later on, on the Ask the Skipper segment, we're going to bring on a 10-year-old Mets superfan, the amazing Cam, on the show to ask you a few questions and to talk about his great opening week experience, which will warm every Mets fan's heart. But first, Terry, let's uh, open the show with the obvious, uh, that the Mets' first week of the season has been less than impressive, uh, starting off uh, with the Mets getting swept by the Brewers. A tough start so far to 2024. Yeah, I mean, you know, you want – there's such ex- expectations. You know, and, John, every, there's 30 teams, and even though the teams there are teams that, you know, people don't expect to do very well, you all want to get off to a good start. You want to keep your fan base excited. And especially in New, in New York with all of the writers and all the media, I mean, they were all excited. We had, you know, with David Stearns coming in and, and some of the moves he's made and obviously a new manager – who I thought he's done a very, very good job in spring training, trying to get it ready. You, you know, you, everybody wants the team to get off to a good start. Just things happen once in a while. You know, they got off to they they got swept by the the Brewers, who played very, very good. They got tremendous pitching on opening day. When and, and so you know, it happens. It's part of the game. And I think you you can go back and you're going to see throughout the years. <clears throat> there's a lot of teams that get off to slow starts. I mean, we can go recently, but Philadelphia Phillies two years ago. I mean, they were being buried by in June, and they ended up being in the World Series. So, you know, it, it's the, the season is so long. You know, we used to t- tell the players, you know, when things are going good, don't get too high. And when things are going bad, don't get too low. You've got to maintain that constant uh, attitude that, like, come in the clubhouse, do the best you can that day. When the game's over, tip your hat and – because you got to get ready for tomorrow because today is over and there's nothing you can do about whether you win or lose tomorrow's another day. And, and, you know, when you play 162 games, it's a marathon and there's a lot of things that are going to happen in the next five months. Yeah, that's uh, very true. I mean, it's a long season, uh, but right now, New York, uh, the fans and even some of the beat writers are all kind of chicken littles right now. The sky is falling. The Mets are doomed. You've heard it all before. I mean, you've been in the dugout when it when one of your teams has gotten off to a poor start. How do you handle that? The media, the fans, how does it affect the confidence uh, of a team when the media and the fan base are losing their minds like they're doing right now? Well, you know, I, I will tell you, John, you know, certainly I had managed enough teams to when I came to New York to have been, been through some tough times. But, you know, you, that's when you really rely on your veteran players to, to really help the younger guys. Hey, look, teach them. This is all part of being a big league baseball player. You know, you're going to have those ups and downs and you can't let it affect them. That's why you got to teach great, for great game preparation. You know, your, the pregame routines that these guys get, don't change them just because, you know, you maybe you've gotten off to a slow start. I mean, we look, you know, at, at some of the, there's a lot of great players around the league who've gotten off to a slow start. Why? We don't know. But we know one thing, they're back of their baseball card, said they're good, really, really good players. And at the end of them, you'll be surprised how many of those guys are going to see those same numbers. So just try to be patient. Don't let, let the fans run with what they want to run with. you got to get yourself ready to play. Yeah, uh, that's very true. I do want to touch on a couple of things in that opening weekend series, which became very controversial. Uh, talk to us about Reese Hoskins, uh, Reese Hoskins and that play on opening day. His hard slide into second baseman Jeff McNeil wound up emptying the benches. In your opinion, was that a clean play, and was McNeil's reaction justified there? Well, 
obviously, you know, because they reviewed it and they, they said, hey, it's a clean play, it ends up being a clean play. Now, did he slide a little late? The answer is yes. The problem became, and I, I don't blame Jeff, like, because I will tell you, if you go back, you know, I know that he got spiked on his right foot. I wasn't worried about his right foot. I was more concerned about the, where his left leg was because he, he stayed on the base for so long that Reese, who's a big guy, slides into that left knee, you know, and that knee is not, it's not, you know, he actually had it facing towards third base. So that's in a vulnerable situation. I was very worried that, you know, that he might get a real bad knee injury. So he escaped that. And I understand, but because nobody slides in the second anymore, John, everybody thought it was a bad slide. Well, was it late? Yes. Was it a bad slide? Obviously the rules say no. So, you know, and, and I, I don't know what else to say, except, in, you know, when the game was over, Jeff said, I wasn't even trying to turn a double play or there was no chance for a double play. Well, you watched him. He's trying to transfer the ball and that's all the guy that's sliding can see. He can't see that there's where the runner is behind him. So, you know what? I didn't, I thought the slide was late, but it was clean. And in the fact that nobody breaks up double plays anymore, I'm sure it took Jeff by surprise. And so he got upset by it, but fortunately it calmed things down and, uh, you know, hopefully they move on from it. Yeah, the game has changed so much, as you mentioned. I mean, you don't see uh, double plays being broken up anymore. I mean, they took a lot of that physicality out of the game, uh, the game, the way the game used to be played. But uh, uh, Mets reliever Johan Ramirez apparently throwed, uh, threw and missed Hoskins in the seventh inning of game two, and then he got ejected without warning. Did that kind of give you deja vu in a way, since we're bringing Tom Halligan on in a couple minutes? Uh, by bringing back some of those memories from uh, 2016. Yeah, it did. You know, I was at, I, I was in New York for the, for that, for those games. I, I will tell you this, John, and I, I don't know Ramirez. I don't know him, but you know what? One of the things Noah did, he didn't leave it. To, he didn't leave anything to chance. He didn't throw, you know, a ball down and away and then a ball up and away and then bust him inside or throw up behind it. He walked out and he threw right behind Chase Utley. And that's what I, if you, and if you got an issue with the player, do it. Stand up and go get him. Now, you know, the oil, I had a slinker. The weather was, you know what, and I, and I agree with some of the stuff that was said. Hey, look, you're a big league pitcher. You don't, you know, you don't very seldom see a big league pitcher throw a ball, you know, two feet or three feet behind somebody. You might maybe now because uh, you can't use the grip, the stuff on the, the ball to help you get it. And maybe if you're in a, a, a real hot day where you have sweat, Maybe ball might get away, but you know what? It, it it was what it was. I didn't I didn't particularly think it was, especially when it was ruled that the slide was legal. I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. You may not like it, but it was legal. So you know, and then to retaliate from that, I was a little surprised by that. Yeah, it was a controversial weekend, controversial play. Uh, it's just the way the Mets started their season. Uh, but as you said, there's a lot of games to go. There's a lot of baseball to be played. Uh, so uh, it's early. Let's put it that way. Uh, let's not uh, let's not call out, you know, the fire engines and try to put out a fire. We'll see how the team plays out the rest of this month. It, it's still, in my opinion, it's going to be an exciting season. Now it's time for talking with TC. On May 28, 2016, during a game at City Field in New York, during a Mets Dodgers encounter our special guest and terry collins became joined at the hip forever he was a major league umpire for many years debuting in 1985 in the national league retiring in 2022 he officiated two world series five league championship series nine division series and two all-star games but he will always be known from that game in may when his ass was in the jackpot during what has become one of the most widely seen viral videos of an umpire and MLB manager going at it. So today, Terry gets his shot. Let's bring on Tom Hallion. How you doing, Tom? Very good. Thank you. Hi, Terry, Tom. How you go. doing? Good, Terry. Wish I was in well, Florida. It's kind of cold up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it is certainly an honor to have you on the show. You know, it's uh, – I've, I've known you obviously for many, many years, great respect. And, uh, you know, what happened when that, when that video came out, you know, you and I, uh, were the conversation at a lot of parties at a lot of, a lot of bar, bar stools. And, uh, it's, it's going to be fun to talk about the event itself. 
Yeah, it, it, it uh, took on a life of its own. And um, I don't know, I've told people that knew you that were going to see you or whatever. Um, I just uh, would always tell them, just tell Terry how much I respected him. And that's why we got through that argument the way we did. So um, it's it's great to to be able to sit here now and talk with you about it. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I, you know, I, I'm down here in Florida and I have a lot of New York fans down here and every I meet somebody new every week. And the first thing they'll say is, boy, I saw that video, you and Tom Hallion. It's the greatest video I've ever seen. So uh, we'll, we'll share some thoughts on it today. And uh, uh, John, do you have anything else you want to add before we take a look at it? Well, yeah, this is the first time. This is kind of an exclusive. I mean, this has been, you know, seen around the world for years now. Uh, but this is actually the first time that you two have gotten together to discuss it publicly. That's yes. true. So we have the tape. We're going to bring the tape up and uh, we're going to get into it. And this is, uh, like I said, one of the most widely viewed ejections of a manager in the history of baseball. It was leaked. Uh, and still that source who leaked it is unknown because Major League Baseball had a rule. If an umpire is mic'd up, they're supposed to get rid of that video right after that game if it's if it's a mic'd up situation in this case somebody saved it and somebody leaked it and the world has watched it over and over again it's truly a classic piece of video let's get to it marsh and uh and and get that video up and and see what all see what all happened in 2016. So basically starts off with Noah thrown behind Utley immediately. Uh, I guess the umpire here, and, and then here's Tom coming to confront Noah Tony who's been ejected. That ain't going to happen. I mean, I, I knew you were going to say that, but that ain't going to happen. I mean, that's, that's the wrong time to do it. That's all. I'm telling you. I'm not trying to do anything. Well, so I, you know, it, it's, it is what it is, but that's, that, that ain't going to happen. Our, our ass is in the jackpot. We don't do something there. That, I'm just telling you that. But shouldn't there be a, shouldn't there be a no, warning? No, I mean, the, okay, the situation of what, what happened and everything else, that's what dictates that, okay? But there was no Neil, prior knowledge that before the game started. I mean, Neil, if Terry comes into the dugout Neil, and says, Neil, hey, if somebody gets hit, then that's... Neil, then Neil, we, everybody, everybody knows, everybody knows what, what the situation is, okay? All right, let's pause it there. <laughs> Terry, take it away. Yeah, so obviously, Tom, the biggest question everybody wants to know where did the phrase our asses in the jackpot come from uh well I, I haven't used it in maybe five times in my life but i don't know why that night it came out twice once to know and once to you um it goes back to uh, when i was a young kid uh living in saugerties new york we would get home from school and we'd go right to the ball field and uh, we would play you know all baseball till six or Till we had to be home. Well, there was a couple of times we went extra innings and I wanted to stay a little later. And um, that's when my sister would ride her bike over and she'd go, mommy wants you home. Your ass is in the jackpot. <laughs> Meaning I was in trouble. I, I, my, I was now I crossed the line and I'm in trouble. So that's where it came from. But, um, you know, I, I, I have to be honest with you. I very rarely use it, but that night it came out twice. You know, it's it's funny you bring that up because, you know, ever since the, the video has come out, I mean, everybody wants to know. I, I talk to people and they'll say, what did he mean by that? I said, I don't know. I haven't talked to Tom since it happened. I, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing the, hearing what it meant by it also. And, but I, I think it's a, a great story. I mean, it came out to be a great story. And, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, but again, I thought, you know, the way you were you handled those guys on the mound, uh, you know, it's pretty funny when you look at the video, the guys that were there with, you know, Eric, Eric Campbell was there, Neil Walker, and Ty Kelly. And Ty Kelly makes a joke today. He said, my gosh, in my brief major league career, he said, I'm in the most watched video in all of, in the last 10 years of baseball. I happen to be in that game. He said, everybody talks to me about you know, being on the mound at that, at that particular time. <laughs> he was smart. He had good timing. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I have a question, uh, Tom. The what was the reason that you were mic'd up for that particular game? 
Well, it was a Fox game. It was Saturday afternoon. Um, and Fox, uh, we had agreed to uh, having the home plate umpire mic'd up um, for added, uh, you know, stimulus to the game. Uh, they wanted to hear what the umpire said or what went on. Um, but we also had, you know, the rule that after every game, it got destroyed. It, it was not to be leaked out or kept or anything else. So that's why it was such a big surprise two years later when it hit the Internet and it, it came out. But uh, we had we had our, a triple A umpire working with our crew and the union had decided that they would not wear the microphone only to protect them. And so the crew chief would usually put the microphone on. Well, I had first base that day and um, that's why I had the microphone on. No, I said, you know, one of the things that, you know, usually I usually I'm certainly aware that someone, you know, that is, and like Tom said, it's usually the home plate umpire that's might. And so, you know, I didn't think anything of it when, you know, I went out to home plate because I didn't, I knew he wasn't Mike. So when Tom came in, but got all of a sudden came up, uh, obviously I had forgotten that he'd alerted me to the fact that he was Mike. So, uh, I, yeah, obviously I got a little carried away with myself. No, it was good. A little bit. <laughs> uh, before we get to the clip, we're going to restart it and see where, where, it got wild. Um, this was a volatile situation, a potential volatile situation because of what happened in the playoffs with, with Utley and, and uh, everything that, that happened. Uh, were there discussions before the game with the umpiring crew that something possibly could, could happen that night in regard to a retaliation or a message? Uh, yeah, we talked about it. Um, you know, the first night, Friday night, um, Terry brings the lineup card out and Dave Roberts was first year manager for the Dodgers. He brings the lineup cards out. And, you know, there was small talk about uh, this and that and uh, welcoming, you know, Dave to the big leagues and everything. And um, he said, you know, Terry, um, you know, this is my first year as manager. And, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have anything to do with what went on in the playoffs in last year. So I just want you to know that we're, we're cool and everything. And so Terry said, well, you know, it was bullshit, but, um, you know, we got to, we got to move on and let's, let's do, let's go. And, uh, you know, they shook hands and they left And when, when they left home plate, my second base umpire, Phil Cuzzy goes to me. He goes, that was the kiss of death right there. <laughs> they left shaking hands and being good and everything's good. And you knew something was going to, you didn't know, but you know, that's, that's the classic of uh, pat you on the back and then kick you in the ass. <laughs> so we did, we, we, we did have discussions, you know, listen, if it's, if it's up by his head behind him, you know, shoulder high, you know, just, Use your gut, use your instincts of what's going on with the game and do what you think you have to do. So mm -hmm. I said that to the other three guys. They had full uh, backing of me if, if that's what they decided. So that's that's that was our discussion. We did have a discussion about it. And um, it was just let let the game dictate what happens. That's all. OK, Terry, uh, did you have a discussion with Noah before the game about anything? Uh, I did not, you know, we, I had, you know, every, a lot of people thought something may happen because it was Noah, you know, during the playoffs, he had uh, insinuated after in game five, when we played the Dodgers um, and, and after Chase had broke Tejada's leg on the, on the slide, he didn't play for two games. And then we went back to game five and uh, we thought for sure he was going to play. And Noah came up to me, I put him in the bullpen that night and he said, you want me to throw at somebody tonight? If you, if you want, if you want me to throw at somebody, let me know. And I said, we're right now, we're going to worry about winning the game. We'll worry about that other stuff later. This the most important thing is to win this game tonight. So obviously we, we went on to the world series. And if you remember in the game three of the world series, he did that, what he did to Utley to Escobar, the leadoff hitter of the Royals. And, and it shook the Royals up, to be honest, they were screaming and hollering out of the dugout and, of course, nobody went to the mound. The guy's six foot seven, two hundred and fifty pounds. Nobody went out there, but they had a lot to say about it. And you know, to be honest, I think maybe it, it kind of fired us up. So when when we, we played the Dodgers the next year, nothing was said to Noah, but there was that little piece that you said, "Gosh, 
you know, because Chase, when they introduced him, when he when they introduced the lineup, obviously he got roundly booed. So everybody at the ballpark on both clubs knew that there was, you know, there might be something going on. But to be honest, I really thought if there was anything that was going to happen, he'd probably hit him. But throwing behind him and then to get ejected, you know, and I had to go. I, obviously, when you got to protect, you got to protect your players. And so, uh, you know, it, it came what it was. But no, he he shocked me by not saying something. And maybe he told the guys in the bullpen he was going to do it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, let's get to the video and see what happens next. And uh, this has become world famous. Everyone is going to he- see it right now. Do it. Then you talk to me right about that. Here, you, okay. you got to give us a shot. You know what? You got to give us Harry, a shot. Okay, listen to me. Let me hear what I'm saying, okay? You get your shot. You had your shot right there. In the situation. Well, why you not? know the situation, I Terry. Know it. Why okay. don't you get a shot, it's Tommy? Because that, doesn't, that makes oh, it worse. Man. Terry, that makes it fucking Tom, worse. I know it. But MLB did nothing to that guy. Nothing. Okay, that, that I, I can't God control that, it. Terry. I can't control that. You know as well as I do where I, Terry, you know where I stand on the whole fucking situation. God damn it, no, that, but that's, but that's. You're the, better than that, Tommy. No, you no, know that. Terry, listen, I'm telling you, our ass is in the jackpot now. Okay? Okay? That's what I'm just telling you. Oh, fucking motherfucker. You know what? That, that, that's, oh. you got it. You got it. Okay, get it. You got everything out. <laughs> You know that that brought back brought back a couple memories of of the whole argument, Terry. That it was uh, it, it was that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I again when it all happened, and, and Tom, you know, I, I I tell a lot of people when my I think it was the second year I was managing in the major leagues with it, in Houston. We had a fight with Cincinnati, and Big John McCherry was the home plate umpire, and. and I don't, I can't really today don't know how it started, but I knew that, you know, we had to retaliate as, as the opposing team. And he came to me while he was getting ready to eject players from the first incident of guys coming out of the dugout. He looked at me, he didn't even actually didn't even look up from his papers. He's writing down names. He goes, you got one shot. You get the first guy in the batter's box and then I'm going to put a stop to this. And I said, okay, that's fine. So, and, and you know, one of the things about it, you know, again, Tom, the old time, we lived it. We went through it. You know, these guys didn't, they didn't hide it. They did it. I mean, they, they didn't like wait till it was too old or something. And, or, you know, you walked in there and you got drilled. And, and I'm going to tell you to this day, and I am sure in my heart, Chase Utley knew that they, they were going to throw at him. And if we had hit him, he would have flipped the bat to the first, the dugout and went to first base. There's no doubt in my mind, because that's what kind of a pro he is. He just gets it, you know. And so, you know, what, and I, again, I just reacted because we never did get to see him until that particular moment. Yeah, our shot was when it went aside when Noah threw it behind him. But uh, again, it, as, you, as we looked at the video, obviously you were able to keep your calm. <laughs> where I, I, didn't, I got a little carried away myself. I know there was a part of it, which when I say it, it brought back memories. Um, I got a little, little more anima- animated because... I, I heard the crowd behind me and I, you know, you were really going at it and I just wanted to kind of let, let, you know, give it back to you a little bit to just to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to take this, but you better not try anything else. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and I, you know, that's the thing, you know, Tom, that, that uh, you kind of miss today. I mean, we all get that managers get that, you know, yeah. we say something, we expect something to come back once in a while. You know, it's no big, you know, one of the reasons why, and I have tremendous respect for umpires. My college roommate was a major league umpire for many, many, many years. His name was Rocky Rowe. And so even in the offseason, we'd get together and we'd talk about managers and talk about manager-umpire relationships. It was always a part of the game. you know. And it was like, you know, the guys that we knew, you know, cared about the game and did their job, they got tremendous respect from the players and stuff. But there was always going to be an argument because nobody's perfect. And I miss that today when I see some of these games and I miss that stuff. So – um, anyway, it was, it, it, it was over. And, and I thought, uh, you know, to be honest, uh, I was very surprised that this thing got out. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it was, um, two years later, I was umpiring a game up in Seattle and, uh, came in the locker room and boom, <laughs> the phone was blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I had, I know, you know, when it happened, I had, I had retired and I was down here in Florida, and and all I got a phone call, and someone said, "Hey, uh, 
have you seen the, the video of you on the internet? And I said, no. And they said, well, you need to see it. So <laughs> I thought, really? He goes, no, you need to see this. So, and I did. So I got it, I saw it, and I was shocked by it. So I had a very good friend at Major League Baseball, Kim Eng, uh, who was there. And I called Kim. And I said, how did this get out? And she said, we don't know. I said, well, don't you think there needs to be an apology coming to Tom and I someplace? This shouldn't have gotten out. And she said, well, we're looking into it. And obviously, I never got a call. I don't know if you did, Tom. But I never they're, still, they're still looking, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You so. know, what's funny, uh, uh, you know, just to add on to that is, so I was up in Seattle. We get done with the game. I worked the plate that night, get done with the game, and then boom, the phones blow up, and then it's it's like, holy shit. So, you know, you call the – you call the the union president and you say, hey, you know, what's going on? You know, this just hit the Internet. You know, what's what's going on? Da, da, da. So anyhow, that it it, you know, kind of is like. There's a lot going on now because, you know, your phone's ringing, this person's calling, that person's calling. But guess where we went after the Seattle series? L.A. New York. L.A. Oh, L.A. Oh, my God. So I work third base. You know, you have, you have the, the plate and then you go to right. third. So I work third base and I'm, you know, kind of jogging down to third base and Chase and uh, Kershaw are right at the top of the dugout and say, hey, Tom, come here. So I walk over and they say, hey, what, what is, where did this ass in the jackpot come from? What, what, do you, what does that mean? <laughs> so they were the first two that I, that I explained it to. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And and you are absolutely right, Terry. Um, Chase has told me uh, that, you know, Tom, I, 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 w I wish he would have hit me. I would have walked to first base and it would have been over. But, um, you know, the fact that he didn't, um, you know, I, I, I didn't want him thrown out or anything. But I said, well, you're a ball player. I'm an umpire. I have to do my job. You do your job. So but he, he totally got it. You know, he, he, that's old. That's you know, you were saying all that. And it's like reminds me of old school. You know, that that's. That's where I learned how to umpire. That's where you learned how to umpire. You know, now it's, you know, it's it's different now. So, but it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of you look back on it. You're watching the video. It's it's pretty neat that uh, that 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 was a uh, major league game that uh, two people trying to one to tell his point, the other guy to tell his point, and we came out of it, you know, in in good shape. So that was good. Yeah, you know, a lot of my friends, when they've watched it, they've, they've, they've said, you know, we never, as a fan, we never know what's being said on the field, ever. And that was the first time we are, and all any of us got exposed to what actually is being said between an umpire and a manager, and they thought it was the coolest thing they've ever seen. And and I have, I mean, I got, I have relatives, uh, young boys that are my nephews, and they, they call me, they'll say, Uncle Terry, I watch that almost every day. And I would say, okay, I think it's, you might want to pat, move on. <laughs> it's time to move on. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's, it's true. It's, um, you know, you, you, you know, I, I, I don't know who knows how many times it's been played and who knows how many people have come up to either me or you and, and said, that was a great, great video he goes you know we and most of them say we wish we there would just be more of that in the game so that's that you know that that is you know you got to be careful you know you we, we talked about uh you know crossing that line and everything but um you know if you could if you could bring a little bit of it that you know like you said though with with the game nowadays it's different you know you don't get those arguments anymore yeah tom did so did, did when you know before you retired and obviously replay came into being uh did you guys as umpires did you like the fact that re replay was coming in and maybe those ma you know manager umpire relationships were kind of pushed off to the side did that did you guys notice a big difference yeah um old the older guys um old school guys uh were try to fight it right to the end um the newer guys they were all happy with it um, so that's, that was the difference. You know, it was, a, it was a different game back then. I had to defend my call. You had to defend the player, your team, and you would do what you had to do to, to kind of make that point. And, um, yeah, you don't get that anymore. Now, now you get this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. It. I know it. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the, one of the things also, uh, John, that, 
you know, the, the, these things go on. You know, the professionalism of the game, When even when you have a confrontation like a Tom and I had, you know, the next day it was over. You know, there wasn't mm-hmm. care. Hey, look, it happened in the heat of the battle, and we got to start fresh. And the new, next day, otherwise, you know, the – the camaraderie between managers and umpires would really fold it, if you if you didn't have the ability to say okay it's done let's move on we've everybody we've, you know we, I paid my penalty uh, you know Tom did his job let's let's now let's just move on and play another game and and that's the thing I always respected about you know Tom and the, and all the umpires that have ever dealt with it they kicked me out of the game hey the next day it was forgotten so well it happened more than once. Right, Terry? Yeah. You've been tossed out of a couple of games. <laughs> yeah. I have a question for you, though. But uh, uh, did you ever ask Noah, like, how the heck did you miss him? Or did, I did. You know? Uh, well, yeah, that's, you know, that's a good question. Obviously, when the game was over, when it, not it was over, but we both were ejected. And I went in the locker room and I went right up to him. I said, what was that? And he said, well, I, you know, I just wanted to send a message. I said, well, hit him. You throw 100. Hit him. If you're going to leave, you know, you want to send a message, leave a bruise. You know, it's, that'll send him. That'll send a message. But you know, that was his way of of saying. You know, I I, I probably he probably didn't really want to hurt him. You know, because he did throw really hard. But he just wanted to send a message. And uh, you know, obviously, when you're managing the game and it's a big game against the Los Angeles Dodgers, and there was a, I'm sure Tom remembers there was a big crowd at that at, the, yeah. at those games. And here I now now I, my whole bullpen is going to be scrambled. So. I wish I'd have been a little bit more prepared so that I could make sure someone was ready if, you know, if the instance came about. But, uh, you know, players are players and, uh, you know, they make decisions on the spur of the moment. And sometimes they don't get a chance to let you know what's going to happen. So, uh, again, we. And it, le- and it leads to getting their ass in the jackpot. Yes, it does. It does. That's true. <laughs> Well, this is uh, great to just see you guys get together and like no hard feelings. Uh, you have utmost respect for each other. And and when Terry, you uh, said that uh, you had talked to Tom and he agreed to do this show, it was I knew it was going to be amazing, an amazing segment and uh, just wonderful to see you guys together and finally get a chance to talk to each other about it publicly. Yeah, I think I think it's great. And I really appreciate Tom coming on the show. And, and I will tell you. John, I've talked to a, a lot of people in the last 10 days and told them that Tom was coming on, and they said, we cannot wait to see the segment. So I'm excited. Tom, thanks so much for being on the show. Well, it's been my pleasure, Terry, and uh, it, it has been great to, to be able to sit here and uh, talk about it. And and the best part was to be, laugh about it um, because it is, it is fun. It, there's parts of it that are funny. And, uh, <laughs> it, you know, it just – it got the blood flowing when I was watching the argument. Uh, it was uh, nice to remember and uh, go through it again. <laughs> I and, and to be honest with you, I'd argue with you any day, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again for being on, John or Tom. I really appreciate it. John, really? anything else for Tom? No, I just appreciate it, Tom, very, very much. It's a pleasure to meet you. And thank you so much for uh, uh, doing the Terry Collins show today. It was my pleasure. Terry, uh, couldn't ask for more than that, uh, talking with TC segment. Tom Hallion and you getting together was magic. It was great. You know, I really appreciate him coming on. And, you know, I've known Tom a long time. And he's one of my – actually, he's one of my favorite umpires I've ever had to deal with because he has this way about him. He carries himself great. You know, he, he cares about the game. He hustles. I've always gotten along with him. It's pretty amazing that, uh, you know, this is – this got carried away like the way it, it, it didn't got out. But you know what? If it happened to somebody, I'm glad it happened to he and I because we have a great relationship. Yeah, it seems that way, and the mutual respect is there. It was just great, and I think people are going to love it when they see it, when, when they listen to it on all the podcast platforms. Uh, right now, each week we do a segment. It's called Ask the Skipper, uh, where fans get to ask you a question, Terry. Uh, today, we decided to bring on a fan uh, to ask you their questions live on the show. Uh, this kid, 10 years old, he goes by the name Amazing Cam. Uh, he's a super fan from Long Island, huge Mets fan. He's made quite a name for himself over the past few weeks. So let's bring him on right now. Hi. Hi, Cam. How are you? Good. How are you? Well, thanks for being on my podcast. It's, it's great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you've had had an incredible week. 
I, I'm sure I've heard about, I've heard, I, you know, I, it was pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, I've got a couple questions for him when it's my turn to ask the questions, John. So, uh, uh, you got it. You got it. Uh, but, uh, we first became aware of you. Um, uh, there was a TV show that you, uh, were invited to be on and as your super Mets fan that you are. And, and that was the Kelly Clarkson show. And Terry, why don't you jump in? Because that's where you first saw Cam. I did, uh, Cam. I was in New York last week. I was going to do. I did the pre and post game show for opening day, but I was also did baseball night in New York with SNY, and I was just getting ready to leave my uh, hotel room, and I happened to have my TV on, and sure enough, it was, I was watching the Kelly Clarkson show, and there you are. I heard all about what a great fan you were, and and I just thought it was a great story, uh, very very fun. I want to ask you about how you became such a big fan, but. Uh, but then I, when Mike came out, when you said, oh, I haven't met, you know, uh, you'd like to meet this guy or that guy. And when Mike came out, I thought they couldn't have got a better guy. Uh, you know, one of my favorite people ever that, you know, in the game that's ever been in the game. And, uh, certainly, uh, I'm sure it was a great thrill for you. So how did you become such a big fan? Well, I got my first tickets to a Father's Day game and my dad took me. And he saw it in my eyes that I loved it very much. And we have, and we kept on going ever since. Oh, that's great. Did you ever, were you, how old are you? You're 12 or 10 or? I'm 10. You're 10 off. Oh, well, you probably didn't get to come to any of the games where I was at. Probably you were probably a little too young for those. So uh, I, would have, I would have loved to have met you in person. Same here. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, well, Terry, you know, not only did Cam appear on the Kelly Clarkson show last week, getting to interview Mike Piazza, I mean, what a dream that is, just to be around Mike Piazza. But he got the ultimate VIP experience uh, on opening day as the guests of the owners of the New York Mets, Steve and Alex Cohen. So uh, they put together a great uh, video. They're at Amazing Met Zone on Instagram, and it's just wonderful content there. When I saw this video, I was like, you know what? We got to play this video because any 10-year-old or any 67-year-old like me would have loved to have had an opening day experience like this. So uh, uh, we'll get to our producer, Marsh. Why don't we uh, show Terry that video, and, and we could all enjoy it. What happened to you on opening day this year? Cohen, one of the owners.
Wow. Um, that's an experience for a lifetime. There. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. How did that happen? I mean, how did you get to get into that suite and with Alex and Steve and how did that all transpire? I know you've been following the Mets. You were down in spring training. You said play ball to everybody. So you developed a relationship with the owners and how did this happen? Uh, I don't know, but my dad knows. So <laughs> Your dad knows. <laughs> well, it, well, it had to be something it? from the, uh, Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, Roy, why don't you come in, uh, Cam, Cam's dad, and tell us how you pulled this off for your son, please. Okay, so how it all started, right, guys? Hey, Terry, thanks for having us, by the way. Um, <laughs> I took him to his first game. It was a Father's Day game, and uh, he fell in love with the game, so we started going multiple times. And then he was so obsessed with the team, he would go back and watch old footage. And Terry, he's seen... Uh, he seen the video that you guys were talking about <laughs> earlier. He was just a little too shy to talk about it. But uh, when we opened our segment for our live on Wednesdays, we actually used the soundbite of that. You got to give us a shot. That's something oh. epic that we'll never forget as Mets fans as well. Um, and um, so what happened was I started the, uh, my personal page with Cameron. And um, I, little lo and behold, Alex Cohen came across it from me hashtagging the Mets and stuff like that. And she reached out one day and said, I love what you're doing with your son. Continue to do it. And uh, we kind of built a relationship off of that. And she's been cool with us ever since. And she's always liking everything Cameron does. And he, she said, you know, he puts a smile on her face every time he, she sees him. So she, uh, she knew he did the Kelly Clarkson show. Everything went great. It was phenomenal. It was a great, uh, great time there. So they wanted to give him the show actually gave him his experience on Monday, but she reached out to us that her and Steve wanted to spend the day with him. And uh, they invited us to the ballpark and everything he asked for, he got, and he got to hang out in the suites with them for, for the entire day. And she introduced them as the little celebrity on TV, amazing Cameron. He also got to hang out with Jerry Seinfeld and a lot of cool people. So, you know, that's how it all happened. Wow. That's tremendous. Very, well, very, congratulations, very, Cameron. It had to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So uh, so this this segment is called Ask the Skipper. So, Cameron, I'm going to turn it over to you so you can talk to Terry and, and uh, get your questions answered from him. Okay. So what impact did David Wright have on the clubhouse? Well, there was a reason, Cameron, why we decided to make David Wright the captain, because before he was the captain, his influence in the clubhouse was the, maybe the best I've ever seen. He, it, it wasn't that he gave speeches, that he respected the game so much, his preparation, the way he'd go about getting ready for a game, his concentration, uh, you know, an hour before the game, it was all baseball. And these, you know, these guys, you know, it's a long day for them at the ballpark. And they're, you know, they'll have some fun. But when it comes time to get ready, David Wright got ready. And I used to be in the clubhouse a lot. And when he would get to the ballpark and walk in the clubhouse, the other players would look up to see, you know, is he going to say something? What's he going to do? And I saw it and I said, I went to uh, uh, Sandy Alderson and, and Jeff Wilpon and said, I, I'd like to name this guy the captain because of his presence in the clubhouse. And I, fortunately, David decided he would accept that. And he became, in my my judgment, uh, the best captain the Mets have ever had. We agree. <laughs> okay. Who are some of the best players you like to coach? Well, I've been blessed. Uh, you know, I, in my managing career, I – you know, my first managing job was in Houston, and I had two Hall of Famers and Jeff Bagwell and Craig Biggio in Houston, and they were great, great players to watch, great players to be around. Um, then I went to Anaheim when I managed in Anaheim, and I had an outstanding team in Anaheim. Garrett Anderson was a great player. Tim Salmon was a great player. Darren Erstead was a good player. Jim Edmonds was a good player. Chuck Finley was a good player. So I've been blessed about having guys who, you know, not just talented guys, but good people. And then obviously when I came to the New York Mets, I mean, we've had a whole clubhouse filled with stars and it's just was always fun to be around them and, and, you know, get to watch them play every night and you know, thinking that you maybe have a part of their success, but for sure, you know, I've been, the game is about the players 
and the talented uh, talent of these players and these guys have shown off that they uh, they are they are the stars. Did you like playing or coaching? <coughs> oh, I love playing. I love playing. I I you know when I was player, I used to come to the ballpark every day. I didn't care where my name was in the lineup as long as it was in the lineup. Uh, I love to be out there. I love to compete. Uh, that's what the game was about, and that's why. You know, when I decided I, I knew I wasn't going to be a good enough player to be a major league player, I started to learn every facet of the game because if I wanted to become a coach, I wanted to be able to coach no matter infielders, outfielders, pitchers, catchers, base running, whatever the, the, the area was, I wanted to be able to make a contribution to it. So, uh, but I've always, the reason I stayed in for so long is the competition side, and that starts with playing. All right, uh, Cameron. We really appreciate you coming on the show today. You got one more? Go, go ahead. Go for it. Who? Who was right? You wrote them down. Who way? Who was your who favorite player was your growing favorite up? Favorite player growing up. Well, I'm from Michigan, Cameron, originally, and uh, there was a Detroit Tiger. You know, when I was growing up, we didn't have, to, we weren't able to see baseball like you can today. We had to listen to it on the radio mostly. And there was a player in Detroit named Al Kaline who was elected to the Hall of Fame, was probably my favorite player growing up. He was a tremendous star. And one of my biggest thrills in baseball was when I was managing the New York Mets, we went and played the Detroit Tigers and Al Kaline was on the field and came over to say hello to me. It was the biggest thrill I've ever had. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you for having me. Excellent. You bet, hey, pal. Uh, really yeah. good to have you. Great to, great to have you on. Stay a fan. Enjoy the game. Uh, we need more like you for sure in the game. Yes. Thank Cam. you. Well, listen, we want to thank you. And uh, we want everyone to follow Cam on Instagram. Alex Cohen does. Uh, it's at amazing underscore Cameron, C-A-M-R-E-N. And also follow the amazing Met Zone. And that's at Amazing Met Zone on Instagram and Threads. Uh, great job, guys. And uh, we hope to see you soon out there at the ballpark. Uh, all right. We appreciate you coming on today. Thank you for having me. Bye. Thanks, Cameron. Right, bye bye. Well, he's a kind of a cool kid, Terry, wasn't he? Little Cam? Oh, very special. You know, when you saw when you saw the Kelly Clarkson show. I mean, it warmed your heart. He got so excited when they gave him the tickets to the game. He was so excited. And the look on his face when Mike Piazza walked out from behind the curtain was absolutely spectacular. And, and anybody that saw that, they you you can't watch that and not have your have warmth go through your heart and see how excited it is. And, you know, that's why the game's great, because there are fans that love it and appreciate it, and Cam is one of them. And we got to bring more of those youngsters into uh, the game of baseball and, and uh, having an experience like this kid just had. Wow. I'm sure every 10 year old out there that's a Met fan would have loved to have the same experience, but that was a, uh, that was incredible. And, and uh, we appreciate them coming on. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, so submit your questions to Terry, either by email or social media, just send the email to the Terry Collins show with gmail.com or go to X or Instagram at Terry Collins underscore 10. And maybe we'll get your questions answered by the skipper in a future episode. And don't forget to follow Terry on social media. Uh, just go to that at Terry Collins underscore 10 on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and be sure to subscribe now to the Terry Collins show, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast and on YouTube uh, Terry's going to wrap up this edition. Another great show. I uh, certainly appreciate you uh, as always. And uh, we look forward to uh, coming on the, the next show. And I think you got somebody that uh, I had breakfast with, with you at, down in Port St. Lucie, an old friend of yours. So why don't you let us know uh, who's going to be on the next show? Yeah. Uh, well, the original Mr. Met, the guy who, you know, is one of the greatest Fans of the Mets, one of, did one of the greatest jobs for 40 years with the Mets, still there, uh, loves the Mets. Jay Horowitz is a, ran the media relations department for many, many years, saved a lot of players, a lot of problems with his, his ability to, to handle the, the sports writer. So I can't wait to have Jay on. He's a close friend, and it'll be a great show. He'll have some great stories for us. Yes, he has. He has been with the organization since 1980. 
So certainly a great tenure there, and we can't wait to have Jay on the show. All right, Terry, that'll wrap up this edition of the Terry Collins Show. Until next time, this is John Arezzi for Terry Collins. Let's go Mets.